In the last couple of years, I've completely changed the way that I go about building online sales funnels. And it's worked out really well for me. But the interesting thing has been, when I look around the internet and I see people who are talking about sales funnels, teaching sales funnels, no one is talking about this approach to long-term profitability of sales funnels. And I couldn't figure out why that is. And then I realized, well, it's because it's really, really hard. People don't like hard things. But the thing about hard things is, I'll tell you a secret, they're often worth doing. In case you don't know me, my name is Ollie Richards. I'm the founder of storylearning.com. It's a multi-million dollar online education business. I'm also a mentor and advisor to other online entrepreneurs. My journey with funnels, sales funnels, started over 10 years ago. I was part of Russell Brunson's inner circle back in the day. And I learned how a lot of people around the world build sales funnels. And one of the things that you learn to do in that environment is go and model things that are already working. And so this is the general approach to sales funnels. Figure out something that's working and an approach to to funnels and go out and model that. And that's what I did for ages. And then one day I decided that I was going to rework one of our main funnels at Story Learning. It was time to do a bit of conversion work, make some more money, increase response. So I hired a conversion expert to come in and, and I said, like, can you help us get a better response from this funnel that we had? And he said, sure, I'll have some results for you within two or three months. And I thought, great. So two or three months came and went and sure enough, we didn't have any uh, any good results from it. And I was asking, why not? What's going on? And he said, well, Ollie, the problem is everything's all jumbled up in your funnel. You know, when I look at the, the emails, the order form, the sales page, you've got the price everywhere, you've got the offer everywhere, bonuses guaranteed, it's all gonna mix and jumbled up. So I can't really test anything without changing the entire funnel. And I realized, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. So what are we gonna do? And he said, look, we're gonna, rip everything down, burn it down to the ground and start from scratch. And so that's what we did. And then over the course of the next few months, we started rebuilding a new clean sales funnel and we started testing from that point. Now it took us about eight or nine months to actually get results. In the end, we did, we got, a, I think it was a 35% lift in the funnel overall. So great, but it took far longer than it needed to be. When I think about this now, it's a little bit like baking a cake from a recipe that has no quantities on it. You can give it your best guess, but then when the cake comes out of the oven, flat as a pancake, it hasn't risen, and you look through your recipe and think, well, what the hell did I get wrong? You've got no way of figuring it out because you don't have any of the details. It was all guesswork. And so now I take a very different approach to sales funnels, which is not starting from a kind of perfect model. I don't aim to get the funnel right from the beginning. So here's how I think about it now. There are essentially three main parts to an online sales funnel. You've got the emails, you've got the sales page, and then you've got the checkout. And then you've got two main components to an offer that makes it work. You've got the offer itself and you've got the pricing. Now there are other things, there's bonuses, there's guarantees, but fundamentally those are the main parts you've got to play with. Emails, sales page, checkout, and then offer and pricing. And any one of those things can make or break the entire sales funnel. So the way that I approach it now is to think, well, how can we stage all of these things so that if we want to test something, we can do it quickly without having to rebuild the, the entire sales funnel. So if you remember from our jumbled up funnel back at Story Learning, if we wanted to test the pricing, we would have had to change the emails, the sales page, re-record the VSL, change the order form. And then if we got a better result or worse result, we wouldn't be able to say for sure it was down to the pricing. It could have been the fact that the sales page changed or the VSL changed or the emails were different. And so we want to separate it all out. So in terms of structure, I think of email, sales page, order form, and I think, right, email, the only job of the email is to paint a picture of the prospect's future life and get the click through to the sales page. That's the only purpose. So we don't mention offer, we don't mention pricing, nothing like that. We just write emails that get the click through to the sales page. On the sales page, the only job is to present the offer and get the click through to the order form, the checkout. And then on the checkout form, the only job is to introduce pricing and to get the sale. So we've got the emails that get the click through, the sales page that introduces the offer, and the checkout that introduces the pricing. Now, that's not usually an ideal sales funnel. It's not usually a perfect sales funnel. You wouldn't normally wait until the order form or checkout until you reveal the pricing for the first time. It's usually not good sales. But we're starting from a place of saying, not how can I build the perfect funnel, but how can I create a funnel that allows for testing so that I can eventually get to the perfect answer as quickly as possible with as little friction as possible. So the emails are written to get the click through. If people are not clicking through from the email to the sales page, we know that the emails are not compelling enough. So we can diagnose that very easily and then write emails that are better that get the click through to the sales page. Easily siloed and segmented. 
on the sales page, we're introducing the offer so that if no one clicks through to the, the checkout, it's because there's something wrong with the offer. We can test it. And then at the same time, we're split testing VSL versus long form because then we can just, we can see, do more people click through from VSL or do more people click through from long form? And then on the checkout, we can introduce the pricing. So if you've got good click through from the emails to the sales page, good click through from the sales page to the checkout, but then no one's buying on the checkout, it can only be because the pricing is wrong. So now we know to adjust the pricing and we can carry out multiple of these tests to get to the ideal setup of, of everything there. At which point then we can say, right, we know what the right offer is. We know what the right pricing is. Maybe we've tested the guarantee and the bonuses as well. So now we can go about designing a really nice sales funnel and figuring out where to sequence and place all that information. But in order to get there, we've had to isolate everything and test it separately. So that is how I build sales funnels now. I'm not aiming to get it right first time, I'm optimizing for the testing process. This is a lot like trying to make that same cake that I mentioned earlier, except that this time, We've written down the ingredients. We've written down the quantity of the ingredients. We know the temperature of the oven. We know how long the damn thing's in the oven for. We know everything. So that if it turns out flat as a pancake, we can then show it to a professional chef and say, look, what did I get wrong? And he can say, oh, well, that's because you only put in 50 grams of sugar and you needed to put in 35. And look, the temperature on the oven is 10 degrees less than it should be. They can diagnose the problem because they've got all the information and it's all separated out. So my funnels are a little bit like a cake, which I never really thought about. If you found this video useful, please hit the thumbs up button. If you like more kind of recipes like this, then you should download my 118 page case study where I reveal exactly how my online education business story learning runs. And if you liked all of that, then you should definitely go and watch this video over here, which YouTube seems to think you will really, really like.